Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and today we're going to be taking a look at the King's Indian defense with Kasparov behind us and well he's going to be teaching us how to deal with the Samish attack. All right, here we go. We start off with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, pawn to e4, pawn to d6, f3, and this is the start of the Samus variation. Now, as you can see here, this is a very aggressive attempt. Why is this aggressive? Because white is planning to go bishop e3, queen d2, bishop h6, and then just all out full assault on our king side over here. So most of the time, you don't have to castle too fast as you'll be just castling right into the attack. Why do that? Here we're going to be following the principle, when they attack on the wing, you attack in the center. And we'll take a look at, at an idea about that very soon. And here, Kasparov went ahead and played knight c6 here. Again, castling here is a little too fast here and really just going into their attack. So Kasparov plays this nice and coy and plays knight to c6. And some people here might be asking, well, can't white just play pawn d5? They're more than welcome to. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to provoke white to expand too fast because then they can't even control their own side of the board and well this is our side of the board so if they go into our territory too fast we're going to surround them and then we're just going to attack them and if d5 was played knight e5 f4 knight back to d7 a lot of times the computer is always giving white a very big advantage in this opening of king's Indian defense this is not one of those cases in fact it's just about an equal position here with that being said white knew who uh kasparov was and did not even challenge him they went ahead and played Bishop to e3, just getting ready for their attack over here on the king's side. All right, and now a very nice move here by Kasparov, one that not many people would probably think about, pawn to a6. And how did he find this move? Well, it's one of those moves that, well, there's nothing really else good to play here. As I mentioned, if your opponent attacks on the wing, you should attack in the center. Here, the normal move of pawn e5 is actually quite bad here. Why is it bad? Because you're not opening up the center here. Here, white will go ahead and play pawn d5, close in the center. And after you move your knight, I'll just say to e7 here. Now, well, white's close the center and they can go for their kingside attack. You could try to go queenside, but it's really hard to break through here. That's why in the game, black went ahead and played pawn a6, looking about ideas about b5 in the future. Again, d5 is more than welcome to play as we want them to expand. Remember, when you play in the king's Indian defense, you're looking for dark squares in particular. All right, here we go. Queen d2 got played, looking to go in and play bishop to h6. Should we castle now? Of course not. Let's keep developing and focus on the queen side. That's where our counterplay is going to be in this game. Rook to b8 gets played. Again, ideas about b5 is in the air. And now here white plays a very bad move, rook to b1. Why is this bad? Well, white was supposed to concentrate on attacking on the king's side. And what does rook b1 do? It says they're going to go queen side. You can't have everything you want, especially in chess. So this was an inaccuracy, and it allows now Kasparov to take advantage of it. How do we take advantage of it? Well, now after rook b1, there's no castling queen side here, so we can just go ahead and castle king side. Wait a second, can't they just attack us on the king's side? They're more than welcome to because now when they do this, well, we're going to be able to attack them back and the king will, will be stuck in the center. Or if they do try to castle king's side and they push their pawns forward, they're just going to be weakening their king's side so we can attack them again. All right, white went ahead and played b4. Again, incorrect plan here. All right, black to move. What do you play here? What is the best decision in this position? All right, hopefully you push pause and try to figure this one out. What's the move here? Open up the center. Well, how do you do that? Here, e5 gets played, the thematic move here. Wait a second, didn't you say that they could just play d5 here? They can, but now we have a new counterattacking idea. So white played d5 here, and what do you play? Here, if it wasn't for this move, then black would definitely be worse. Knight to d4 here, and well, this knight is taboo. You don't want to take it, because it would only give black the better position. In the game, white went ahead and played knight to e2. Wait a second, why can't we take this knight? Well, first of all, this bishop and this bishop are worth about, well, this bishop is probably worth about five points in this position, and this bishop's worth about three. So a lot of times this bishop wants to be traded for this one. This bishop is so important for attacking and defense, well, that's why it's worth the five points. So after bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, eh, black's already in a better position because even though he lost it, remember this bishop's worth five, four at, four at the lowest. So we're just going to be a better position. In fact, here tactically, it's black to move and win. Do you see the move? Hopefully you found it. Knight takes on e4 here. And, well, you're at least losing a pawn, if not just a piece here. Okay, what if queen takes on e4? Pin it and win it. Here we go. And, uh, oh, gosh, even if you try to move the queen somewhere else, bishop can take on c3, knight can take on c3. It's just game over here. And with the king in the center, this is why this is allowed. Remember, punish your opponent king whenever they are in the center. How? Open up the position. Make pawn trades and 
make uh, pawn trades, open up files and diagonals for your rooks and bishops. All right, so back to the game. After knight d4, white went ahead and played knight g2, e2. And here we need open files. To take is a mistake. Er, it only helps develop their pieces. What do you do here? Open up the position. Pawn to c5 gets played. Okay, pawn takes, pawn takes. Again, you're more than welcome to take here. We want to open the, up the position, and this is the prime time to do it. With the king still in the center, invest a little bit of material to attack your opponent's king. Knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. It looks like everything's just going great here for white. Okay, well here Kasparov sets up a beautiful tactical idea. Rook to e8. What do we do now? Well, white sees the idea. Most likely it's going to be d5 to put pressure along the pin. So bishop to e2 gets played, and now Kasparov finds a brilliant idea. Here you go. Pawn to c5 gets played. Okay, if I don't take back, I'm just losing a pawn, so pawn took. And now the double x clam move. Black to move. What do you play here? Oh my gosh, check this out. Knight takes on e4 here. The knight cannot take back right away as rook takes b1 check. That knight was defending. Okay, so I can't take back with the knight, so I have to take back with the pawn, right? Because the knight is attacking the queen here. So, well, the pawn went ahead and took, and this was the idea. Queen to h4 check. Pawn to g3, and now rook takes on b1 check. And here, white had nothing better than to play king f2. Wait a second. Shouldn't we just take back on b1 here? If you do, after queen takes e4, everything's falling. You have a rook hanging over here, knight hanging over here, and the bishop over here on d4 here. There's just no good way to get out of this situation. So in the game, after rook takes on b1 check, king f2 got played. Here the thought was, well, if I go ahead and just move my king up, the pawn pawn is attacking the queen if the queen moves away then my rook can just take back and well everything's nice and good here kasparov again finds an amazing move only move to get the advantage in this position rook to b2 here okay can't i just take you're more than welcome to here bishop takes d4 check and the attack is spurring on and yes these dark squares are just too weak here kasparov would have been winning in this situation so here well black uh, white has nothing better than to go ahead and trade down to a losing end game Pawn takes on h4, rook takes on d2, bishop takes, king takes, and here, well, you can't just take the pawn here on d6 after c takes on d6, rook c2 here, e4 pawn hangs, bishop hangs, this pawn's not going anywhere as the bishop is defending in this position. Oof. So, king went to e3, trying to get out the pin and attack the rook, rook over to c2, king to d3, and now another only move here. Here, we're just going to go for a good endgame, rook takes on c3 check. Okay, king takes, pawn takes, and well, this is a matter of technique now. Although the pawns are even here, these double pawns really don't help, and Kasparov does a masterful job at turning this into a winning endgame. Here we go. Bishop to d3, to d3, bishop b7, attacking the pawn. Rook to e1, rook to e5, a very good move. Um, here, we would have loved to have played pawn to f5 to pin in and win it, but here the pawn could have been pushed forward, and it, comes, it does become a little bit hard to attack. So what does Kasparov do? He makes sure the pawn can't be moved forward. Rook to e5. Pawn to a4. f5. The pawn is now lost. Rook over to b1. Bishop takes. Rook to b6. Looking to win the a6 pawn so that the a pawn can move forward. Unfortunately, well, it's black to move in his best plan. What do you do in endgames? Past pawns must be pushed. Here the f pawn is just too fast. f4. Rook takes. f3. Bishop f1 trying to guard this idea. If he didn't do this, then I'm simply going to trade and then push the pawn forward. And here, well, bishop to f5. Now the rook looks to come in to control the f1 square. Rook to a7 check. King h6. No more bothering my king. King over to d2. Guarding the e1 square. That's okay. f2, getting the pawn one step closer. And also rook to e1 idea. Bishop to e2. If I can get rid of this bishop, I can queen. Kasparov doesn't take long. Bishop to g4. Bishop to d3, rook to e1, the new idea, rook to d1 check, rook takes, and then I can queen. Okay, rook over to f7, trying to stop it. Is this pawn just lost? Uh, now the idea is to block the rook, so what do you play? Again, beautiful tactics, bishop to f5. If bishop takes, then we're just going to go ahead and queen. Okay, so... Uh, pawn to a5 got played. There really was no good move here to play. Here the idea is that if they do queen, I'll sacrifice my bishop. And, well, there's nothing really good about it. Bishop takes on d3 here. Okay. Um, rook takes on f2. Am I not just winning a piece here? Final tactic of the game. Black to move and not lose a piece. What do you play here? 
All right, hopefully you found it. Here, both of these guys are being attacked. The only way to not lose a piece here is rook to f1. And here you see that, well, if they go ahead and do trade, well, the bishop just takes. No time to take the bishop, because then I'll take the rook. So if you move your rook away, then I have time to play bishop takes. Everything's just covered, and it was a very nice win here for Kasparov. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Remember, this was against the Samus variation. Do not fall for the trap and play pawn to e5 in your king's Indian. Remember, you need to either play c5 or c6. Basically, go queenside against Samish. Open up the position as fast as possible and attack your opponent. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next game.